Presenting the New Mexico Senate debate between Democrat Tom Udall and Republican Alan Way. Brought to you by public media partners from across New Mexico and moderated by veteran journalist Sam Donaldson in the KNME studios in Albuquerque. Welcome to New Mexico PBS's 2014 debate between Senator Tom Udall, a Democrat, and his Republican challenger, Alan Way. Each candidate will be allowed 60 seconds for opening and closing statements, 60 seconds for answering each question, and 30 seconds for rebuttals, and there may be a second rebuttal if necessary. We'll begin with opening statements, the order of which was determined by a drawing of straws. Alan Way, yours, your first. Senator, thank you for being here today, and thank you for bringing your experience to this debate. I'm running to be a United States Senator to bring my private sector skills, my life's experiences to Washington. I built a business, I've created a job. I created jobs and I've been a Marine officer. I left home at 17 and I worked my way through University of New Mexico. I don't come from any elite background. I came from pretty average middle class background, but yet I succeeded. And these are skills that I represent that many others have, but that are just like me that are in short supply in Washington. Washington is made up of career politicians. My opponent's been with President Obama 94% of the time. And if we're going to change Washington, we're just going to have to change the senator. I thank you very much, Senator Udall. Thank you to PBS, and thank you very much, Sam, and all the listeners today. Uh, th this is an election isn't about changing Washington. It's about doing something for New Mexico. Uh, I, I stand up uh, and get up every day to do what's right for New Mexico. Uh, I, I realize New Mexicans have real challenges. I experience them. I'm out there with them, uh, seeing those every day. Uh, and one of those big challenges is growing jobs in our communities. I believe that uh, uh, bringing home the funding to those bases is terribly important. Military bases, two national laboratories, White Sands, uh, all great institutions. Uh, I stand strong for Social Security and Medicare, and I want to make sure that uh, we take care of our veterans when they return. Two million men and women serving uh, this country are coming back, and I'm going to do everything I can and have been doing that. Uh, to take care of them when they arrive here. It's great being with you and look forward to the exchange. Gentlemen, let's begin with the, the elephant in the room everywhere in this election. And his name is Barack Obama, the President of the United States. You've referred to him, uh, Mr. Way. Uh, and I want to know, are you running against Senator Udall on his own record? Or are you really running against the President of the United States who's very unpopular? I'm running against Senator Udall who has sided with Barack Obama 94% of the time. And when the president has been wrong on any number of issues, the senator has not had the courage to stand up and break with the president. He hasn't. He has consistently voted with Barack Obama 94% of the time. And frankly, if you're going to vote to send Senator Udall back, you're really going to get Barack Obama's policies for the next six, six years. Because that's the term of the United States Senator, of course. Uh, this is, uh, that there's been failed leadership, failed programs, raw incompetence in Washington. It, it is stunning how much incompetence you see. And it, it ranges from fast and furious several years ago that still isn't resolved yet, Benghazi, the CDC, We'll come the to Secret some of that. Service. We'll come to some of that. Senator Udall, President Obama said publicly earlier this month that he believes his policies are on the ballot this time. And in fact, a few days later, he said that re Democrats running for re-election have in fact supported those policies. Where do you stand about the leadership of this president and his policies? I, I first of all, Sam, want to make absolutely clear I vote 100% of the time for New Mexico, and I'm willing to talk to anybody about my votes and, and defend them. Uh, secondly, uh, I will take on anybody uh, if it comes to hurting New Mexico. I've taken on two presidents on spying uh, in a very powerful way in terms of saying you can't do this anymore. 
uh, and, we've, and we've rolled back some things there and we have a lot more work to do. Uh, when it comes to veterans, uh, I took on President Obama on creating a burn pit registry. I demanded that, that he treat these veterans right. We got a law passed, he ended up signing it, and we really hung in there uh, for Master Sergeant Jesse Baca and the veterans that came forward and told me about the problems they were having. And uh, uh, just uh, everybody knows how important the oil and gas industry is. Uh, I stood up when New Mexico, uh, $26 million of royalties were being taken away from New Mexico. And, and that's something where you take a president on and then they turn around and say, okay, you win, and they gave the money back. So that's, uh, that's the kind of leadership you're gonna see from me. Stand up to the president and then make okay. sure if, uh, uh, so if he does anything up, wrong, we roll it back. Time is up. Thank you. Mr. Way, uh, your rebuttal, but in that rebuttal, can you tell me anything of a major sense that you think President Obama has done right? Well, he does a pretty good job with the uh, seeding of the NC2A basketball tournament. Well, all right. That's a major uh, point to some people in sports, obviously. But I asked the he's question a, because he's, pro it's, he's it's, probably a pretty good father. I, I will give I him credit for that. I asked the question not to embarrass anybody. I, I'm not simply sure. because. Is everybody all bad or everybody all good when it comes to politics? Absolutely not. I've said on numerous occasions, my opponent's an honest man and an affable man. And he's not a corrupt man, and neither am I. But we're not here talking about personal characteristics. We're talking about beliefs and belief systems. Tom's philosophies are different than my philosophies. We recognize that. This has been a failed presidency. And the senator should have, could have, but didn't stand up against President Barack Obama on more than one occasion. There have been numerous occasions. The feckless leadership is, has been terrible in Washington. Is there a rebuttal? The, the, this is about how New Mexico moves forward. I'm here every day uh, fighting for New Mexico, whether I'm in Washington or whether I'm in New Mexico. And I am... I deeply care about public service. I come from a tradition and a family, long history of public service, and I believe that public service can do a lot of good for our communities and for our state. And so that's where I'm coming from when it comes to uh, addressing the issues of New Mexico and all of us working together and moving forward. Well, let's move on now to an important topic that the nation and this state needs desperately help on, and that's jobs and the economy. The unemployment rate has dropped to 5.9% nationally. It's good news nationally, but in New Mexico, it's at least eight-tenths of a point higher, and that's bad news for the state. Uh, if re-elected, Senator, what will you do specifically, if you will, not just generally, to help this state get more jobs and help its economy? You bet. And, and Sam, let me first of all say, uh, we're not at a place we should be. From last September to this September, we grew 6,400 jobs. Our unemployment rate is higher than the nation, uh, and we are going to do better. But let's not forget, six years ago, we were headed into the Great Recession, and we have pulled out. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do specifically. I'm going to make sure that I continue to bring the funding home to our two great national laboratories, to our military bases, to White Sands Missile Range, and to the Waste Isolation Pilot Project. Then I'm going to work with those, in those institutions and our great universities to spin off jobs out of them. I'm seeing that happen every day. Engineers and scientists are leaving uh, those laboratories, some going into rural communities, some going into the cities, and they're taking those ideas. We need to use that synergy and create jobs. Mr. Way, be specific if you will. What will you do if you're in the Senate to help this state create more jobs and improve its economy? That's a great question. I'm pleased to answer that question. First, uh, we need to protect our bases and our national laboratories because that's an essential component to our state's economy. And on the senator's best day and my worst day, I'll do a better job of protecting the military facilities and national labs than he ever can simply because of our respective backgrounds. You mean because you were in the military? You... That, that's right. But that's not all. We have to protect our, our federal facilities to maintain the stability of our state's economy. In addition to that, we have terrible terrible federal overregulation of our industries. And we need to roll back the regulations. I'm for good regulations. I am not for excessive regulations or bad regulations. And I can tell you we've got plenty of the latter. 
And lastly, because I'm a businessman and I have created jobs, and government doesn't create jobs, the business sector does, the private sector All does. All right, time's up, sir. Let's have another round on this. Rebuttal, please, uh, Senator. The, the, uh, the fact of the matter is I bring home the funding for those labs and those bases from the committees that I'm on, and I work very hard at it. Let me give you an example. In the last six years, uh, Alan Way's Tea Party uh, did a sequester, did a shutdown, hurt Los Alamos National Laboratory. We now have gained those thousand jobs back and we're back in a position uh, where we've stabilized that. Sandia National Laboratory, on the other hand, has grown 14 percent in the last six years. That's from the hard work that I put in there on the Appropriations Committee, spending time uh, to, to get the job done. Final word on the subject, uh, Mr. Wayne, and then we move on. Yes. Uh, in case the uh, senator didn't pay attention to the primary, the Tea Party opposed me in the primary, so I am not a Tea Party Republican per se. Uh, the Tea Party has its role, uh, but I have no part and had no part in sequestration. Uh, you were involved with that, Senator. And the, while on your watch, we lost 1,000 jobs at Lanel, and oh, by the way, the Air Guard's airplanes. You know when you roll out the east end of the runway? We had Air Guard airplanes here for over 50 years. Well, they're not there anymore. So we've lost airplanes out of our Air National Guard on your watch. Let's Sam, move on. Sam, could I just, there's an important thing here. Um, Alan, All right, let's you, have a Alan, third round. Alan told, told the Tea Party, and he said this several times, and, and this is like a direct quote. I was Tea Party before Tea Party was cool, and I'm just wondering, Sounds to me like, what, what's going on there? I mean, yeah, that's yeah, I, a statement. I'm hardcore Tea Party, and you can always rely on me. What do you mean? Did you say that, uh, Mr. Way? Four years ago, in 2009, when the Tea Party emerged, it was made up of Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. And yes, I said it then, but the Tea Party of today is not the Tea Party what is it today, uh, four sir, years ago. in your view? It has become a, uh, a group still concerned about the fiscal responsibility of the country, but perhaps less tolerant of divergent opinions. I happen to be uh, a guy running for New Mexico and for the nation without getting caught up in partisan ideology, unlike the senator who has never, who has always been a partisan ideologue. Well, let, let's continue this okay. general subject and talk about fiscal policy, which has a dovetail with jobs and what we've been discussing. Uh, now, Congress fights over that. Uh, spend less, spend more on social programs, continue to cut or raise taxes, particularly on the wealthy, shut down the government to make a point, vote for or against raising the national debt ceiling to pay our debts in order to make a point. It's a general question, but give us some idea of where you stand on this fight over taxation and spending. Mr. Way. We need to have tax reform. You can't have a country that's got the highest corporate tax rate in the industrialized world at 35%. We've got to balance a budget. We've got almost $18 trillion in debt. That debt is getting passed on to our children and our grandchildren. And my opponent has voted for a, a increase in the national debt six times uh, since he's been back in Washington. Uh, we have to have a balanced budget amendment. Uh, it's been attempted in the past. We need to attempt it again, and we need to bring it into fruition. The state of New Mexico operates with a balanced budget amendment. There is no reason why the federal government shouldn't and can't operate with a balanced budget amendment. Senator Udall. The, the uh, tax cuts and tax policy that I've stood for are tax cuts for the small businesses, tax cuts for the middle class, but not tax cuts for the wealthy. Uh, my uh, good friend uh, Alan has said over and over again, he's for more of these tax cuts for the wealthy. I think that takes us down a road of hurting New Mexico in terms of our bases, our labs, Social Security, Medicare, especially when you add in the balanced budget, because what happens with the balanced budget is you so restrict the government, you know the cuts are going to come in Social Security and Medicare. Now, if he supported a balanced budget amendment, which uh, took out Social Security and Medicare, then we could have a different discussion. But my understanding is he's taken a firm position on this amendment, and that amendment 
has ended up in Washington being nothing other uh, than an excuse to turn around and cut Social Security, Medicare. And I just want to tell you, Sam, there are people in New Mexico who live exclusively on Social Security. And when they get sick, they, these these little grandmas living out there, they have a hard time I'm taking upset. care of their medical care without Medicare. And so I'm, I'm going to fight and make sure they're strong and there for future generations. Mr. Way, rebuttal. Yes, the center is really getting carried away to take my desire and intent for the country not to spend more money than it makes to suddenly I'm for tax breaks for millionaires or the rich and I want to push grandma off the cliff. Nothing is further from the truth. I've never said I wanted to raise, uh, uh, cut tax taxes for the wealthy, and I've never said th that I want to cut Medicare or uh, Social Security. In fact, the only cut to Medicare comes when the senator cast a deciding vote for the Affordable Care Act. Out of that process and that vote came a $716 billion, that's with a B, cut in Medicare, and now it's affecting our seniors. So the only person that's hurt seniors is my opponent. Sam. Sam. The, the, I want to come back to this jobs issue. I, I, I was a leader on saving Cannon Air Force Base. Cannon Air Force Base was being mothballed. Uh, what ended up happening is we created a new mission working with the Secretary of Defense. We now have 2,000 more men, air, and women there. Uh, on addition to that, uh, many more planes, many more jobs. The private sector is growing housing. I mean, that's a big success story. And, and to say things about uh, uh, what we need to do for New Mexico, that's the kind of senator I'm going to be. Put aside the partisanship, work, for any, work with anybody for New Mexico. All right, let's move on to another issue. These are local issues. Let's do a couple of them, beginning with the Albuquerque Police Department. Criticized in many quarters, investigated by the Justice Department and in other ways. Uh, and uh, my question is a general one to begin with, and that is, what's happened here? Uh, who's at fault, if anyone? And specifically, how has the administration in Albuquerque, both civilian and police, how has it responded to the criticism? You know, I, Sam, I was one of the first ones to speak up and call for a Justice Department investigation of the police department. Justice has now moved in, and very soon uh, we will get a monitor over the Albuquerque Police Department to completely reform uh, the way they do business. One of the things that we've seen is unjustified and excessive force. Uh, in a sense, we've seen a militarization of the police force. I mean, many of these uh, police departments in New Mexico, and in particular Albuquerque, are buying big tanks, and, and the idea is to use those. Well, we may need to use them if we have a real terrorist situation, but I don't think we should be militarizing our police department. And I look forward to getting a good, solid monitor in place that'll work with the community. We already have the U.S. attorney working with the community to build consensus and move forward with a police department that is out in the community, community policing, where we pull people together. Mr. Way, what's happened here with the Albuquerque Police Department, and specifically, how do you think the civilian and the police administration has responded to the criticism? Well, I'm going to respond to the last comment that uh, the senator made about the militarization of police departments, and I agree with him on that area. I think we've over-militarized some of our police departments. That's not to say they shouldn't have the appropriate weapons to deal with terrorists and things like that. Uh, but, Senator, uh, the police department doesn't have any big tanks, just for the record. Uh, I, I leave uh, the resolution of this matter to responsible people who were elected or appointed for that purpose. You we, don't have a position on the police departments? We have, a, we have a responsible mayor in this city. We've got a new police chief, and now we've got a Justice Department participation, there's a responsible people, and they will arrive at a, at a good outcome for this city. So you think that the mayor uh, and uh, the police chief are doing a good job of handling the situation? I think at the present time, the mayor and the police chief are handling, handling this responsibly. Yes, sir, I do. Senator, I, I would completely disagree. I think the mayor got caught off guard on this. I like the mayor, and he's a friend, and I try to work with him, but uh, he was caught sleeping on this one. If, if you were reforming a police department, you wouldn't have to call in the United States Justice Department, get a monitor over the police department. They're probably going to be there for four or five years running the department. Uh, and so that's where we are right now with that police department. And I'm happy the Justice Department is there because if anybody's seen any of these shootings, 
they are absolutely brutal where the police, they've completely uh, surrounded someone, the, he's defenseless, and then he's up, killed. Sir. Time's up. Last word on the subject, Mr. Way. Uh, we're talking about here primarily issues affecting the United States Senate and the nation. Uh, that's a municipal issue. As a citizen uh, of this state, I'm concerned, and we want a, a good resolution, a, a resolution to it. All right, let's move on to child welfare in the state of New Mexico. According to a report uh, published by the Anna E. Casey Foundation, New Mexico is 49th in the nation for well-being of its children. What would you do in the Senate, Mr. Way, to improve this? Grow the economy of the state of New Mexico, something I didn't quite finish on before. We were in the process of talking about several things. Uh, I talked about protecting our bases, and that took a few of those seconds, too many probably. I talked about reducing federal regulations and reducing the burden so that we can unencumber business and let it grow. But the last thing I said uh, that I didn't get to say, which is the third component of, of uh, how I would approach uh, helping the state create jobs, and that's working with Governor Martinez, the mayors of, this, of, these, uh, city, of our cities, and work with economic development. I've already made a commitment to have an economic development specialist on my Senate staff, and I intend to be very aggressive in creating jobs, something that I've got experience in doing. And the best way you get somebody out of poverty is you create jobs. All right, and so when I ask about specific uh, programs for children, you believe it's jobs in the economy? I believe that's the biggest first step. You create a thriving economy where not only do people have jobs, heads right. of families, but a successful, robust economy throws off enough cash to the state and the municipal levels right. so that they've got safety net programs. And let's, let's move on and we'll add this to your time. Senator, it's your turn. Th th thank you very much. And, and the first thing we need to do is build families and build family income. And the way to do that is the minimum wage. We all know uh, my opponent's so what comment about abolishing the minimum wage. The second thing we need to do is equal pay for women. Uh, this is something that, that the other day, uh, there was a headline saying it's going to take 80 years. We got to do this tomorrow because that helps the single moms. It helps uh, the families that are out there. And, and there's a lot at stake for them in this election. And the final thing, moving from families now, is, is to children. Uh, we need every kid to arrive at school ready to learn. And we now know that those early years are so doggone precious. Uh, we need early childhood education for every one of our children to move them into a position so that then they can uh, open up those windows of opportunity. Thank you. Mr. Way, you have suggested that perhaps uh, people below the age of 26 might be exempt from the minimum wage. So that as you've explained it, they learn to create jobs in their own and they learn the hard work ethic. And the senator is running an ad with your voice, apparently, in which you are saying, so what if they're making four bucks an hour? So what? Would you explain this? Sam, I'd be happy to, because that's a classic example of gotcha politics. I was having a constructive discussion with the Albuquerque Economic Forum about attacking the issue of teen unemployment, youth unemployment. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a terrible teen unemployment problem in this country and in this state, 24% Hispanic youth unemployed, where you have unemployed kids, you have an increase in juvenile delinquency, and then you, get, uh, then you have crime, which has a cost to society. What I want to do is reduce that. And if the senator, instead of playing gotcha politics with a TV ad, would engage with me and would engage with others, perhaps we could come up with a reasonable way to raise uh, the minimum wage, which I'm for, by the way, and have a carve out for kids so that we could allow them to have great job, work ethic, skills on the front end where they desperately need it. You, you think it's unfair for the senator to use what, what are you, were your words unless you tell me that, that there was more to it? It's totally out of context. It, you know, saying that in the way it said is out of context. It's as simple as that, Sam. Out of context, Senator? I, I don't think so, but in, and anybody can read it. It's out there. But the real point here is, is that single moms, uh, young kids out of college with big debt, all of them uh, deserve to get the minimum wage. And, and basically, uh, to say under the age of 26 there's no minimum wage, 
uh, that's, a, that's a pretty brutal course, and I, and I think that uh, we shouldn't take that. The other thing he said, which is interesting on my family agenda there, on equal pay for equal work, is, is he thought it was an inconvenience for his business uh, to, uh, uh, to do it, and he's all worried about lawsuits. I mean, the way to have no lawsuits is pay women equally. Then you don't have any lawsuits. Uh, so I, I really believe we got to do equal pay for equal work. It, it could really make a difference here, uh, and uh, and with those young families, it's it's uh, it's going to be a real bonus for them. As the moderator, I'm going to break the rules if you wish to respond. To what I, the I do said. because the senator, without any knowledge of the company I've run for several years, without any knowledge of our female employees, I have senior executives in my company that are women. We pay our women equally with the men, commensurate with their responsibilities. And there have been times in the growth of our and evolution of our company where there's actually been more women than men in our workforce. I have two grown daughters that I've sent to college. I have three wonderful granddaughters. And I'm telling you, any inference that I'm for anything other than equal pay for women is personally offensive. All right, another big issue for the can country. I, can I just clarify? Senator, I think we really should move Okay, on. that's fine. I really that's think fine. we do. Yeah. <laughs> another big issue, of course, the United States and other nations are mobilizing to stop the murderous rampage of the Muslim fighters in the Mideast who are trying to establish an Islamic state of Syria and Iraq, ISIS. The Obama administration insists there will be no boots on the ground from the United States. But uh, General Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, said about three weeks ago that he thinks it might come to that. And the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, says he believes it will come to that. So here's the question. If you're invited to vote as a member of the United States Senate on whether to send our young men and women into harm's way on this issue, Senator, how would you vote? I, I've already voted to arm rebels as, as we left Washington a month ago. The big issue pending when we go back in November is the authorization of force. But let me say about ISIS, this is a brutal force. Uh, we need to take them on, but we need to learn from the lessons of the past. And ISIS arose out of bad governance in Iraq. Uh, that's where they came from. Ara the Iraqis pushed down the Sunnis to the point that ISIS were able to come in. And so what I want to do is work with the region, work with those countries, the Kurds and others, to, to put fighting forces, not our fighting forces, on the ground, give them all the support we can, give them support from the air. But then we, you, you're not just going to solve this with a military solution. There needs to be good governance. And so, you've got to put both of those together. And so what I'm, what I'm for is working with the countries in the region. They haven't stepped up to the plate, these countries. So the answer uh, to my question is no, you would not vote to authorize American boots on the ground? They, they, I don't believe, yes, the answer to on American boots on the ground, number one, I don't believe we should get in the middle of another civil war in the Middle East. And I believe this is an eighth century religious conflict uh, that, that we don't understand and our people don't understand. We're a lot better off building coalitions on the ground and working for better government. Mr. Way, if, if the president asked for it, if the generals asked for it, how would you vote? Would well, you let vote me yes first no? tell the senator that I understand. Senator, I've been in Iraq for a year. I understand the region and I understand the conflict. And this is more than a civil war. It's an existential threat to the United States of America and to so? our people. How so, Senator? I'd rather Mr. Way. You've got people who have said what they will do, what they want to do, and every time they say it, Sam, they fulfill their prophecy. These people are very serious about what they want to do to us, and all we have to do is look back. As recently as around February, the Commander-in-Chief, our President, called them the JV team. Senator, you should have said something then. But I can tell you we've had two former Secretaries of Defense, numerous retired general officers, talking about the vacillation of leadership that's caused the problem. And you uh, allege that it was all the Iraqis' fault. It isn't all the Iraqis' fault. I will say that it was partially al-Maliki's fault for the problems we have in Iraq. Yes, that's true. But the absence of this administration to negotiate a status of forces agreement and leave a residual force behind of approximately 15,000. Time's up, sir. Would, we wouldn't have this problem today. Okay, Senator. I, I think we've covered that. But you could rebut if you'd like. Yeah. Otherwise, well, we'll I, I, uh, I, I really believe that this is a combination of working together with the countries in the region, good governance, 
uh, I, th I would be opposed uh, to putting boots on the ground. And I think my opponent uh, is saying that he's for another war in the Middle East. I, I don't know. I thought that's what should be clarified here. Very quickly, sir. I I've been in three wars, Senator. And I, I, carry I admire that. I carry a bullet in my leg. I've, I've watched my own son-in-law go off to Afghanistan. I understand what our military families go through. I am going to be the last guy in the United States Senate to, to commit troops in harm's way, particularly without a strategy and a plan. Right now, our troops have nicknamed this operation Operation Enduring Confusion. And you've participated in this feckless leadership. So I'm now confused. I thought you said you would vote for troops on the ground. But you're now saying you're the last guy who would vote to do that? But when with a strategy. And arming Syrian rebels, Senator, isn't the same thing as committing trained troops. All right. It's not quite the same thing. Let's go to the Affordable Care Act. Much fought over, uh, much in dispute. And the question is, just to put it baldly to begin with, should it be repealed, Mr. Way? So would you ask that question again, yes, please, Yes, it's the, the Affordable Care Act, the yes. new health law, yes. sometimes called Obamacare. Uh, should it be repealed? Is it something that you find so odorous and wrong that uh, you should go back to ground zero? The, I, I've heard a lot of people on both sides uh, say different things about this, and there are Republicans who are advocating for a repeal. Uh, You're not I one have of them? used the term fix it because Lord knows there's plenty wrong with it. Now, in the absence of being able to fix it, we should repeal it. But my approach is to sit down with collaboration in a bipartisan way. You got to remember that bill was passed in the middle of the night. My opponent cast a vote for it without ever reading the bill. Never read the bill. It goes into law. There was not one Republican who voted for it. So it, is, it was a partisan bill. And it represents approximately one sixth of the nation's economy. We need a bipartisan solution for health care because the last time I checked, Republicans, Democrats, independents, and even non-registered voters all need good health care. Why were there no Republican votes? Not a single one. Well, when you jam something down somebody's throat at midnight and no one has time to read it, I'll tell you what, Republicans are going to be in the majority, with or without me, I think with me. But the fact of the matter is, I'm prepared to tell Senator McConnell, if he's the Senate Majority Leader, right, don't sir. ever send me a bill I can't read because it's an automatic no. Okay. And Senator, that's something know. we agree on. See, no senator was able to read that bill. Uh, but let's get to the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, Allen has said in the past, void it. Uh, and that's a specific uh, quote from him. He's changing his position today, and we'll accept that. I, then he and I agree, fix it. Let's look what's happened here in New Mexico. 190,000 people that didn't have health care a year ago now have health care. That's pretty special to them. I've talked to a lot of those families. In addition, uh, pregnant women uh, who, under the old law, uh, that was a pre-existing condition, could be kicked off. They're pregnant women, they can't do that anymore. Same goes with discriminating against women on premiums. That's something that's been thrown out the door. If you're under the age of 26, you can be on your parents' policy. I could go on the list. We fill the donut hole with the senior citizens. There are a lot of very positive things in there. On the other hand, there are things that I don't like. I mean, I, I was outraged that the insurance industry issued substandard policies and uh, uh, kicked people off those policies. Time's and, up, and sir. I'm on a bill to fix it. All right. Uh, Mr. Way, you, I think, have run an ad saying that New Mexicans have lost, 46,000 New Mexicans have lost their health insurance under this act. Uh, 200, Sam, when the Affordable Care Act was implemented, approximately 250 million uh, um, Americans were covered by health care. 47, approximately 47 million were not. The net result of the implementation of the ACA uh, added 17 to 18 thousand uh, million more Americans at a cost, an average cost of $80,000 per person. So the Affordable Care Act is anything but affordable, but more to the point, it stripped $716 billion right out of Medicare, and it's impacting our seniors today. So at the end of the day, I don't fault Senator uh, Udall for having compassion for people, I'd give him the credit. I'd say he does have compassion for people. Your time's but up, boy, sir. when you voted for it, you hurt people. Rebuttal. I, I uh, think we ought to fix it. We agree on that. Uh, but the 190,000 people in New Mexico that have health care today, I've talked to many of them, it, 
It has saved their lives. I've talked to women that have cancer. They couldn't have been treated. They're being treated. I've talked to uh, uh, parents that couldn't get health care for their kids. They can now get health care for their kids. That's pretty doggone important. And, and we need to remember the good things that are in there and move forward and fix the ones that aren't, as I just said. Well, something we don't have much of in New Mexico, at least not enough of, is water. It's a big issue for this state. And to say to you, if you're in the Senate, what can you do? But let me ask you about a couple of specifics. From KENW, our sister station in Portales, a question comes about the Ute Pipeline, of which is what, about $400 million and counting? And the question is, how hard would you work to have federal money come and complete that? Oh, I'm, I'm going to fight all the way because that's the survival of eastern New Mexico. I was in at the earliest stages. We got the planning money. We're now building it. Uh, it's very, very important for eastern New Mexico, for the base that's out there that needs water also, Cannon Air Force Base. Uh, the, the thing about uh, the U pipeline is that it's a shared project. The state of New Mexico is a part of it. The cities and counties that are a part of it are into it for funding. And that's the kind of federal funding I always like to see, is when the federal government is participating with other players at the table and, and putting money in. So you, you're right, water's precious. Uh, they're going to feel that it's precious out there in eastern New Mexico. Uh, I, I also would say with just a couple of seconds I have left, I, I organized the first water conference in New Mexico, broad gauge, looking at all the issues a couple of years ago. Uh, we have moved out of that with a real aggressive agenda on water. Uh, we need to do everything we can in this state uh, to, to plan for the droughts that are ahead and, and to deal with our critical water conservation right. issues. Mr. Way, what can we do about either more water or the better use of the water? And specifically, do you back the Ute uh, pipeline? I, I do. The Senator and I agree on that one. Uh, I support the Ute, Ute part, uh, pipeline. And as a Western state senator, uh, all of us, all Western state senators have the same thing in common. Uh, it's an arid, dry Southwest that we need water and we need to reclaim water and we need to be very good about it. I just wish uh, the Senator was as conscientious on other issues as he's been on this issue. Okay. In other words? The, the other thing that I'd like to talk, to, talk about water is, uh, this is in another part of our state, the Navajo Indian Reservation in Gallup. They need water. Some, some, most of those Navajo chapters live in situations where they have to haul water. Uh, we were able to put a pipeline from the San Juan River uh, down through Navajo chapters and then reach Gallup. Gallup, uh, it's estimated by their city officials, only has about uh, 10 years of water. And so that's a win-win for everybody, but it's going to cost uh, uh, some federal dollars, and, and we're going to have others participating in there on it. It's a good point, uh, Mr. Wade. It costs money, uh, and I know you're a fiscal conservative. You've uh, talked uh, frequently about this. But does government have a role to do such things as this for New Mexico and that for Kansas and something else for New York, and how about Florida? Sure it does. Uh, sure it does. The federal government has an obligation to help with infrastructure. That's infrastructure. Uh, our federal government spends enormous millions of dollars, billions of dollars, and wastes a lot of it. We could do a lot of these things if we could make government more efficient. And coming from a business background, that's something that I approach uh, from, from the angle of my life's experience. Balancing a budget doesn't mean we can't give, uh, uh, help the Navajo Nation with a water pipeline. Uh, the two are, uh, uh, are mutually acceptable, but you've got to balance the budget. You know, at the end of the day, you can't, well, unfortunately, the federal government prints money because they got the Federal Reserve. But if you take all the money you've got, put it on a table, then it's up to reasonable people to decide what's m the most important priorities. And it's not to say that something isn't important, but it may be less important. But you can only spend so much money, and, and you can only spend what you've got on that table. Let's move on to another uh, area of spending. You both agree that water is important to New Mexico, and you'll spend money to do that. At the moment, Governor Martinez, uh, has decided not to claim a waiver, a one-year waiver, so that according to a court suit filed by her opponents, 80,000 people would be off food stamps in New Mexico. Uh, she says it's too costly, and she says she believes this recession-era uh, implementation program ought to end. What about that, Mr. Way? Well, it's a state issue. 
Uh, it's a lot of money, though, and it's a lot it's of people. It's a lot of money. It's a state issue. Uh, I, I trust the governor's on top of the issue, and she's doing what she's doing for the right reasons. I, I, I disagree with the governor. I, be, I believe uh, we have a lot of people uh, who need that program. I would like to see uh, the governor be very aggressive in terms of uh, moving out and saying, let's take care of the uh, insecurity we have in our food supply. You know, if you travel New Mexico and you really get to know uh, the state, you realize we have all these food banks and food depots and people come in every day. If, you, if you're serving food at one of those or ha handing a, a, a sack over with food in it, you realize these are people uh, who are just trying to take care of their families. And, and I think it's a, a pretty hard-hearted thing to not, when there's money out there uh, and the rest of the country's taking it, where you have the situation we have in New Mexico that you don't uh, take that money and try to help our, uh, help our children and help our families. Final word on this subject? Yes. Uh, first, I think Susanna Martinez is not hard-hearted, Senator. I didn't I say she was Well, you implied it. Um, I happen to be an organic farmer. A lot of people don't know that about me. I live uh, north of Albuquerque, and I'm a strong supporter of sustainable agriculture, and I'm a strong supporter of helping food banks and helping people. And I really believe that the, the federal government has an obligation to encourage churches and private charities to be more involved with part of this process and not prevent uh, or not be a handicap to them. So I think in many ways we're saying the same thing. All right. Immigration, immigration reform, much talked about, much sought after. It hasn't come. So do you favor reform of the nation's immigration laws to take care of the some 11 million people who are here now undocumented, call them illegally, uh, because I think that's what they are, uh, that gives them some opportunity, most of them, to remain in the United States and work? And even do you favor some path toward eventual citizenship? Senator Udall. I, I think this is a great example of where the Senate uh, where the adults at the table had stepped up to the plate. We passed uh, comprehensive immigration reform with almost 70 votes. Very, very tough on border security. It's 20,000 more border patrol agents on the border. All the very latest technology to make sure there weren't incursions uh, into the United States. The second part of it is dealing, Sam, with what you talked about, uh, the 11 million people. Obviously, if there are some criminals in that group and hardcore violent people, they have to be uh, uh, shipped out of the country. Uh, but I think uh, most of the folks are part of the fabric of society, and we, we need to move forward with a path uh, to legalization on them. And the third part of this is making sure that employers know the bright lines, who to hire, who not to hire, uh, and that situation is, is uh, out of control right now. And I would say on that front that then you have sanctions if they do hire people illegally. Eventually. But very good bill. Mr. Uh, Mr. Way's Tea Party blocked the bill in the House. Great bipartisan <laughs> right, bill. His time is up, but I have it. to ask, eventual citizenship for some of those people or not? Yes, yes, yes. Right. Mr. Way. Uh, I appreciate the senator's humor about my Tea Party, but uh, we'll set that aside so I can uh, rebut the, uh, the question or answer the question, rather. Before we have comprehensive immigration reform, which I am in support of, we have to have a secure border, and right now we don't. And that's the result of the executive not enforcing our laws. Primarily, the executive is at fault for the broken border uh, that we've got. Let's assume we could fix that border, and frankly, we can. Another president determined to enforce the laws of the United States can enforce the border without enormous resources. Although I will say, part of the problem with the border is that we didn't complete the 700 miles of fencing that my opponent voted against when he was in the House of Representatives. Uh, Mr. Obama suspended construction of the remainder of that fence, and that's absolutely necessary for a secure border. But let's talk about immigration. Now, by the way, border security is a national security issue. Not we'll come, I'll give an extra round for this. We'll come back to it. Okay. I, I support uh, border fencing when it's appropriate and strategically done. Uh, that's number one. 
Uh, let me also uh, uh, talk about, uh, on, on the immigration issue, the young kids that come into this country, the so-called dreamers. That is a tremendously sympathetic situation. It's in our piece of legislation that went over to the House that the Tea Party blocked and wouldn't even send us a bill to conference on and try to get a result. So I think there are some very good things in that bill. We need to just keep bringing it back until the Tea Party sends us something. So, Mr. Way, after the border is secure, in your view, what then would you favor in the way of so-called immigration reform? To keep some of these or most of these 11 million people here in the United States or not? I think there needs to be pathways established. One, we need to bring them out of the shadows. And I have just as bit of compassion for those youngsters that were brought here at six months of age and find themselves 18 years old and they've known this, that's all they've known is this country. We need to have compassion for those youngsters and that should be, in, in all likelihood, will be in any comprehensive immigration reform. We need to have a pathway for residency and a pathway for citizenship. And clearly the pathway for citizenship is a longer pathway uh, and one that takes into account those people who may be in line somewhere at some embassy uh, applying to come to this great country. And people come to this great country from all, right. all over the world. Can, can, I, I, can I ask a question here? And I, I really don't mean this as a, as a slammer. Well, I think you could, can, this is your on, debate, it's gentlemen. It's not well, mine, so well, go ahead. Yeah, um, Alan, you've run a company that's right in the middle of immigration, you know, and, and you've made, your company's made $560 billion uh, from the million, Homeland million. Security, but 560 million, sorry, yeah, 500, half a billion dollars. Sorry, I got my zeros wrong. It's okay. But, but what I'm wondering, here, here you've made $560 billion, and Company yet has. you're a small, small government guy. Right. Small government guy. How do you reconcile those things? I mean, the government seems to me has to do this mission and uh, are you advocating cuts on the part of your company and what those things do to get the people, the bad guys out of the country? May I just say that I've been informed that the rules said no candidate questions. Blame me, folks. Go ahead, Mr. Wood. I uh, thought you had permission to let us ask. Well, question. I just arrogated to myself. The, the fourth producer right now is, go, is, <laughs> is, is cringing. But the fact of the matter is I'm happy to answer this senator's question. Listen, we've been, uh, the company I've run is in aviation and we do programs, both commercial programs, government programs, yes, that's a contract we've had for several years. We're good at what we do. We are really good at what we do. I'd be happy for that program to go away, and we'd be doing something else. That's really the short answer. Okay. But I don't think, because there are felons that get removed from the country, so I think there'll always be some exodus out. But I would be absolutely, I'd, nothing would please me more than to have a secure border, and that program would be down to almost nothing. Okay, remember, no candidate questions from me. From here on, okay. uh, climate change. I think there's no uh, disagreement that the climate is warming. And the question is, does human activity contribute to any extent, and certainly to any dangerous extent, in this warming? Because the cycles the rocks tell us have gone on and on and on. And the question is, uh, Mr. Way, do you believe human activity, the fluorofluorocarbons, all the rest, do contribute? Is it a problem? And if so, what do we do about it? Uh, climate change, global warming is a very controversial subject uh, these days and has been for a few years. There are scientists in both camps who will articulate why they're right. And I think one can safely say that there is not overwhelming conclusive evidence for one position or the other. But as I mentioned earlier, I'm an organic farmer. I love clean water like anybody else, and I love clean air. I can tell you that I'd like to focus our immediate efforts on things that are very, very tangible. Pollution that's ruining not only the earth, our air, our water, and two of the biggest polluters in the world are China and India that throw stuff up in the air, and then it goes through uh, the air and eventually gets to the North American continent. I think we need to use our economic leverage to curtail the pollution that they're throwing out into the air because 
Americans are hard on ourselves. We are hard on ourselves, and we do a pretty doggone good you, job of environmental sir, protection. Are you, are you saying, sir, that you want more evidence before you yes, can sir, decide? Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying on that right. subject. But that doesn't mean I'm going to stand there and not do something about pollution. That's okay. what I'm saying. All right. Global warming and yeah. human activity, Senator. Yeah. The answer is yes. It's caused by human activity. Apparently, Alan's a climate denier. I think the science huh. is overwhelming. What we ought to do about it. I, I have an energy policy called do it all, do it right. And basically, we take our traditional sources of energy, like oil and gas, which is very important to New Mexico, lots of jobs, contributes to our state budget, helps the schools out, take the traditional sources and balance that with the renewable sources. We should be the Saudi Arabia of wind and solar and biomass, because these are the fastest growing jobs in New Mexico. And so what I want to see is us move forward on renewables. I was the first one to pass through the House of Representatives a renewable energy bill out of the House of Representatives. I'm very proud of that. 28 states have already done that. New Mexico met their first target and they're doing more. We need to join in with the states and have a national market on renewable energy and move forward very, very aggressively. And that does something specifically about climate change. A rebuttal, Mr. Way? A absolutely. Senator and I agree on one basic premise. Do it all, do it right. If that could only be true. But in the senator's worldview, with re renewable resources, he wants to pick winners and losers. You got to let the private sector, so you can't subsidize renewable to the extent that they have an unfair advantage over non-renewable that's completely driven by private sector forces. So uh, it's either got to be one way or the other, Senator. We've got to let the private sector do it. Final words, Senator. I, I would say the most important thing with the renewable electricity standards is do a signal in the marketplace. Let the marketplace and the in entrepreneurs do this. The, this is the place it's going to be done with entrepreneurs, private sector moving into this area. But if you don't, if you don't lay down some policy, you're never going to get there. One, uh, one uh, further question. Maybe we can have two. Let's see what the time is like. Senator Udall, do you support or oppose a woman's right to choose an abortion under present law? Support, I, support, support it, I, I support a woman's right to choose. I, I also believe that those very, very private decisions that women make about their health care uh, should not have governmental inter interference. I mean, that, that's the thing that I hear women talk about the most to me is why is the government involved in this? Why do these Tea Party types want to <laughs> get in the middle? Of, of, of this relationship between a woman and her family and her doctor. I don't understand that. I mean, I thought, I thought Alan and I shared the kind of privacy, keep the government out in this area, but I guess not. Mr. Way, oppose, uh, support a woman's right to choose? I am a uh, pro-life American. I've uh, been married to my wife for 46 years. I have three grown children, seven grandchildren, and I have been endorsed by the National Right to Life Association. That said, uh, the uh, senator's uh, support of partial birth abortion, where the unborn can feel the pain, to me, is uh, a little gruesome. And frankly, most Americans oppose that procedure. Oppose that procedure. But I'm asking you the general question about a woman's right to choose under present law. Uh, the law is the law of the land, uh, Sam. You think it's wrong, the law? The law is the law of the land, Sam. Senator? I, I uh, find it astounding that he would uh, say that we get into the very, very private decisions that women uh, have to make with their families and their doctors and have the government intervene. That's just, I, 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 I don't understand that coming from a conservative I, privacy kind of orientation, but I guess maybe that's the I, Tea Party twist or something. Well, ahead, uh, Senator, the Tea Party has to do with fiscal responsibility of government. It doesn't have anything to do with these other things. Uh, that's their charter. But uh, I'm all for the government staying out of our private affairs. Your vote, your deciding vote for Obamacare brought the IRS in to manage health care. Now that is an oxymoron. Go ahead. Your vote brought the IRS in? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, maybe he could clarify right. that a little we bit. We have only I a see. minute and a half. And yeah. under the rules, you each get 60 seconds and then 30 seconds for rebuttal. But permit me. Do we uh, need new federal gun control laws, Senator Udall? I, I, first of all, uh, believe in the Second Amendment. Uh, I think an individual should have the right uh, to own a gun, to protect themselves, to protect their family. 
uh, and to uh, hunt and, and other recreational activities. But I believe there are also common sense uh, gun safety measures that we can take, like background checks for everybody. I mean, we have a law on the book right now that says you have to have background checks, and, but if you're a convicted felon or a mental incompetent, you can't, uh, uh, you can't find them out because only okay. about half the people go through background Mr. checks. Way, you That's have not right. Mr. Way, 60 seconds before closing statements. Go ahead. Uh, Sam, I'm a strong supporter of the Second Amendment for some of the same reasons that the Senator just enunciated. Uh, what I find problematic uh, was the Senator's vote to ratify the UN Small Arms Treaty, which would have had UN oversight over several aspects of our weapons manufacturing in the United States. Uh, I take uh, pride in the fact that the National Rifle Association has given me an AQ rating, which is the highest rating for a candidate, someone who's not held elected office. And I look forward to in ensuring that all Americans uh, have their Second Amendment rights if I'm the next U.S. Senator from New Mexico. Thank you very much. It's time now for the closing statements. And because of the drawing of the straws, uh, Senator Udall, you go first. Th thank you. A as you've seen today, the there are big choices in front of you. Uh, the policies outlined here, uh, you, you can have uh, uh, an argument for millionaires and people, the people that are rich doing even better, uh, or you can have Tom Udall fighting for the middle class. And that, that's the thing that I've seen throughout uh, today, whether it's Social Security and Medicare, where his tax cuts for the wealthy and his budget policies would cause uh, us to uh, uh, cut those programs. I'm for making them strong and for them being there for future generations. I also believe we should have a minimum wage for everybody, not abolish it for those under 26. Uh, I am a, a, a strong champion of our veterans. I believe very much uh, that, that, and I thank uh, my uh, uh, worthy opponent for his service to the country. Uh, I believe that, that they have been there for us. We have to be there for them. Thank you for joining us. I humbly ask for your vote. Thank you, Senator Udall. Mr. Way, you have the final word. Thank you very much. I'm running for the United States Senate because I love this country and I make no apologies for it. I get up every day and the glass is half full, it's not half empty. And I think we can take things as they are today and make life better for our people, for our citizens. I sacrificed for my family growing up. I uh, had no money uh, in our family. And when I got to be head of a household, married and had children, I worked, I deployed, uh, I deployed to three different uh, conflicts, but I've done that no different than a lot of people. So I come from a middle class uh, background. I know what hard work is like. And I have a sincere desire to pass on the American dream to all Americans. And I wanna protect our country and I wanna protect our families. I'd be grateful for your vote on November the 4th, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for a very spirited debate. And that's it. Senator Tom Udall, Alan Way. I want to thank our public media partners and production team. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching and supporting public media in New Mexico. I'm Sam Donaldson. Good evening.